this video we're going to look at volume of revolution. Now the volume of revolution is when you have a solid, a three-dimensional solid, which is formed by rotating uh, a shape around the x-axis by 360 degrees. So if you imagine here this uh, rectangle that I'm tracing out, if this was spun around the x-axis, it would create a cylinder. Likewise over here, if you imagine this triangle that I have traced out, if it was spun uh, around the x-axis by 360 degrees, it would create a cone shape. So the volume that is created uh, is called a volume of revolution. So the volume of revolution is defined as V, volume, is equal to pi times the integral between A and B of y squared dx. Now we'll just look at this one uh, to refer uh, to explain this. So if you imagine here in this first one, uh, if you imagine here in this first one, your a would be 0, and say maybe this other point is 6. Uh, it is all of these v things are areas. So what you've got, the length from 0 to 6, that's really from your, your a to your b. And your y is this height. So your y is here, this would be height here, which is effectively r, the radius. So r squared. Uh, that's what you get here, r squared times pi is pi r squared, which is the area of one of those circular cross sections. And then when you stretch it out between a and b, that creates that length. So that's really how we're getting this. So basically it's an infinite amount of those circles spread out, uh, pull the length, creating the volume. And that's it. Okay, so our formula, let's just go through it again. Our formula then is uh, V is equal to pi times the integral between A and B of Y squared DX, and that's where Y is equal to a function of X, which is being located. So in this example, it says a finite region found by the curve Y is equal to X squared, the lines X equals two and X equals four, and the X axis is rotated through to pi, radians by the X axis, find a volume of revolution uh, form. Leave your answer in terms of pi. So let's just do a wee diagram here, just for the sake of it on this one. Uh, so if you imagine you've got your x equals 2, and you've got x equals 4, and your y equals x squared curve between that is, is going to look very roughly like that. Now if you imagine that is rotated through, and I'm going to do this as best as I can, bear with me. If you imagine that is rotated through 360 degrees, it is creating this sort of shape, not too bad. It is recreated, uh, creating this sort of three-dimensional uh, shape. Okay, so a sort of lampshade on its side sort of shape. So that's what we've got. So our V, our volume, is equal to pi times the integral, and we're just going to write A, B, Y squared, DX. Just write it out the formula, because it's new to us, so that's going to be pi in this case. My limits are two and four. And it's x squared, so if you square x squared squared, I should say, so it's going to be x to the 4 dx. From here on in, it is just an integration question. So square brackets, because we've integrated, it's going to be x to the 5 over 5. And that's between 4 and 2. And then that's going to be pi upon, and the first one is going to be 4 to the power of 5, which is 1. I have done this out already. I'm not doing this in my head. 4, 0, 2, 4 over 5, and then 2 to the power of 5 is going to be 32 over 5, and if you do that out, you're going to get uh, 992 pi all over 5, which is equal to, that's the exact value, which is equal to 2, sorry, 623.29, and it's a volume, so just say unit cubed, and that's it. Okay, this example says the curves, curved surface area of a vase is, is formed by rotating the section of the curve y is equal to 3x over 10 plus 30 over 10x between the lines x equals 5 and x equals 20. Find the volume of a vase and the radius at the narrowest part of the vase. Okay, first thing I'm going to find the volume. So I'm just going to write down my formula. V is equal to pi times the integral a between a and b of y squared dx. In this case, that's going to be pi times the integral between 5 and 20 off. And then we've got to square this out. This is the bit that's going to be a bit annoying here. So we'll square this out. 
Okay, so a bit of work to do before we actually get integrating. So if we do this out and tidy up, we will get 9x squared over 100 plus uh, 180 divided by 10, so it's going to be 18. Just 18 is going to be, is it 18x? What do we have here? Yep, it's just going to be 18 uh, plus uh, 900, and then that's going to be x to a minus 2. So I've just got that in index form. So that last term, that was my 30 over x times my 30 over x, which would be 900 over x squared, which is 900x x to the minus 2 in index form. So we do this out. We've still got pi, and then square brackets. Because we've integrated, you're going to have 3x cubed over 100 plus 18x. And then that's going to be minus 900x to the minus 1. And that's between 20 and 5. And then I'm going to have a square bracket pi upon. I'm going to have one bracket minus another bracket inside, which is very messy. Apologies. When you put the 20 into it, I would just do that in the calculator in one go. And when I did that, I got 555. And when I put the... 5 into that expression above, I put, got minus 345 divided by 4. Okay, when I went on, that worked out to be 2565 pi, all divided by 4, which is equal to, that's an exact perfect value, but it's equal to 2014 2014.55 and that's going to be units cubed. Okay, uh, that's the first part of the question done. That was finding the volume. And then it says, and the radius then, uh, find the volume of the vase, and then find the radius at the narrowest part of the vase. Okay, let's have a think about this. The narrowest part of the vase is going to be here. Uh, that's what it's, what it's going to be. And this is, if you think about what this is, this is the lowest point of this curve. Y is equal to 3x over 10 plus 30 over x. So we've got to use differentiation to do this. So we'll just go on down here, and we, as we said, we're just going to uh, differentiate this thing. And we'll just say radius. Radius at uh, narrowest part will be The y value at the minimum value. Okay, hope you can read that. So let's just write down your y. It was equal to 3x over 10, and then plus it was 30 over x, but I'm going to write that as 30x to minus 1. And then to find the minimum value, remember we have to differentiate. So if you differentiate this, you're going to get 3 over 10 minus 30x to minus 2. And then we're just going to say, Oops, sorry, that's a mess, get rid of that. Uh, we're going to say, uh, put your dy by dx equal to zero. And we'll go up here, just separate that off, so that's a different, you can see that's a different bit. So we're putting that equal to zero, so zero is equal to three over 10 minus 30 over x squared. Just makes it a wee bit easier when you take it out of index form, just to do this next wee bit. And a wee bit of cross multiplying, 300 is equal to 3x squared, which means 100 is equal to x squared. So which means x is equal to plus or minus the square root, so plus or minus 10. Okay, uh, we can ignore the minus 1. So just say ignore the negative, because you can see from the diagram that you can see from the diagram that x is definitely not a negative value, so it has to be a positive value. Uh, okay, so therefore x equals 10. Okay, that's not the answer. Uh, we have to find the radius, so we need to find the y value, but we also need to prove that it is a minimum as well. So to prove a minimum, you need to find your dty by dx squared. So differentiate your dy by dx again, you're just going to get plus, 30, plus 60, I should say, x to the minus 3. And just say when x equals 10, dy by dx 
Uh, we don't really care what it is, but we just care if it's positive or negative. It's greater than zero, therefore minimum. Okay, and also then when x equals 10, your y value is going to be equal to 3 upon 10 over 10 plus it's going to be 30 over 10. And that's going to be just going to be 3 plus 3, which is going to be 6. Okay, so your answer radius is equal to 6. And I don't think we actually know the units, so 6 units. Okay, that is our notes on um, volume of revolution done. The questions are written down at the bottom of this page, and it's topic 7, integration B exercise 10 and exercise 11 as well.